Enter Bruno Mars, the man on the ticket, the smoothest voice in the music industry. <laughs> I want to be a millionaire so freaking bad. I need to scale more women. Oh, so sad. Oh, come on. Not now. Oh, uh... Hey there, beautiful. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, Bruno! Oh, you look so hot! I can't wait to see you! Neither can I, my love. Are you on your way? Yes, yes, I'm just a few minutes out. Are you already there? Yeah, I came early and got us a table. You came early? <laughs> That's not going to be the last time I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll see you then. <sighs> All right, this could actually work. She's totally clueless. I only have to keep this going until I get one more check. I already got 100000 from the old fart, and I could use more of that retirement money. <laughs> I just have to warm up a bit. Cause, girl, you're amazing! Just the way you are! Hey, Hollywood, wrap it up already! I gotta take a dump! <clears throat> okay. Sorry about the wait. What am I thinking? I should have never agreed to this. Maybe there's still time to make a run for it. Well, someone's excited to see me. Come here. Uh, hi. Oh, it's so good to finally see you in person. You look a little different. Is your skin darker? Uh, oh yeah, well, uh, you know, I I've been getting a lot of sun on tour. Developed a bit of a tan, I guess. Oh, I see. Um, <clears throat> here, take a seat. Why, thank you. Such a gentleman. You know, I may have to take out the dancers just for you later, because I bet that's what you like. But of course, uh, the lady must be treated with respect. Oh, please, I bet you don't treat your groupies the same way. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I'll give you a hint. I want to be your groupie and I want you to pull something of mine that rhymes with chair. Uh, uh l let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? I gotta finish taking you out to dinner first. Uh, excuse me, waiter? How may I help you? We're ready to order. Wonderful. Can I get you started with any drinks? I'd like to order a bottle of your finest red wine and then, uh, let's see. I'll have the margarita flatbread pizza, the fettuccine alfredo with chicken, the smokehouse barbecue burger, the seared ahi tuna, and the filet mignon, medium rare. Okay, and for you, sir? Um, I'll have a steak medium rare as well, and some carrots on the side. Of course, your food will be right out in just a moment. So, you're gonna let me backstage so I can watch that tight butt move around while you dance, right? Oh, you want to go on tour with me? <gasps> well, yeah. Didn't you say you wanted to be together? I'm not just going to be alone while you go from city to city going through girl after girl. I want to be the one who gets your 24 karat magic. You see, that might be a little bit of a problem because, well, I, I don't control who goes backstage. My bodyguards were in charge of that. What? You're a mouth! Your employees don't listen to you! It's complicated. A lot goes into running a tour. I mean, I, I don't even understand all of it. Shut up! Are you even Bruno Mars? Of course I am. Then sing for me! What? Sing for me now, or I'll make sure you never talk to the moon again! I would catch a grenade for ya. I would do anything for ya. What the hell was that shit? You're not Bruno Mars, you dirty liar! Calm down, we can talk about this. You wanna talk? I gave you a hundred thousand dollars! I want my money back! Do you hear me? Stop, please! You lying, cheating scumbag! I swear, I'll give you your money back! I knew you were lazy from that song you made! What's this? 
It's a letter from her. Hey, scumbag, they just let me off with a fine, so I thought I'd write to you in prison. Just wanted to say I hope you rot. I hope you never get out, and I hope a big, hung inmate crawls into your cot and crams you full of regret 24-7. Or should I say 24 carat magic? <laughs> no! This story was inspired by an incident that happened on Valentine's Day. A man named Chinwendu Azuanwu was connected to a scheme that happened between September and October of 2018 involving a 63-year-old North Texas woman who told police that she created an Instagram profile in search of companionship. She told investigators a person pretending to be Bruno Mars reached out to her and made her believe that he was interested in pursuing a meaningful relationship. Documents state the woman fell in love with the Mars account, and at the time, she believed him to be the real singer because he had sent her multiple texts and photos of the artist while he was on tour. She also told investigators that he wanted to quit the tour to be with her. The Mars account then began asking the woman for money. A few days later, the woman sent a $90,000 deposit into his account, which was later found to be withdrawn down to a zero balance. The man was charged with third-degree felony money laundering and was taken into custody. I didn't meet either of my biological parents until I was in my 20s. I was adopted when I was only two years old, and I've been with my adopted family ever since. I never knew my birth parents. Once I got older though, I started to be more curious about them. So more recently, I located my biological father and reconnected with him. It was pretty awkward between us at first, but after a few weeks of spending time together, it got a lot better. There was only one problem. I had been dating this one guy for quite some time. He was a good bit older than me, but it worked out well. His age didn't really bother me, but ever since I started reconnecting with my biological father, things became very strange. Whenever I brought my boyfriend around my father, he would always act like a total jerk and get angry over the stupidest things. When I confronted him about it, all he would say is that he really didn't like my father for some reason. He never gave me any more information than that, even when I pressed him. But he continued to act differently whenever my father came around. They were both really important to me, and it didn't seem fair that I couldn't see them at the same time just because my boyfriend was being a jerk. Still, it wasn't an easy thing to get around. One night, when I was with my boyfriend, I got a call from my dad, inviting me and my boyfriend to a family dinner at his house on Valentine's Day. I thought it was a little strange to have a family dinner on Valentine's Day, but I didn't want to say no since I was afraid it would hurt my dad's feelings. The only problem was I didn't know what my boyfriend would think. When I told him about the plans, he responded a lot better than I expected. After hesitating at first, he agreed to go when I told him that it was important to me. I knew that it would probably be a little awkward, but I really wanted my boyfriend to get over his strange feelings towards my dad. I hoped that the family dinner might do the trick. When Valentine's Day arrived, my dad came and picked me and my boyfriend up in his car. My half-sister was with him. I'd only met her a couple of times, but she seemed cool so I was excited to get to know her better. My dad lived a few hours away from us, so we had a pretty long drive. Finally, we arrived at my dad's house and sat down for dinner. It wasn't much better once we started eating either. The whole atmosphere was eerie and awkward for everyone. No one seemed comfortable. Even my dad was acting strange and quiet. Then, after no one had said anything for several minutes, my dad suddenly asked my boyfriend if he wanted more wine. My boyfriend agreed, but he seemed kind of scared about it for some reason. Everyone was so tense. I regretted agreeing to the evening in the first place, but I didn't know how to leave without being rude. My dad came back with wine and went to pour some in my boyfriend's glass. Then, out of nowhere, he smashed the bottle over my boyfriend's head. 
The next thing I knew, I was helping my sister dig a hole in the backyard. I was scared as hell. Then my dad came outside carrying a huge bag and threw it inside the hole. Keep digging! You need to bury the whole thing! My hands were shaking, and I started to cry, but I did as he said. I looked over at my sister to see that she was feeling the same, but she too continued to dig. We didn't have any other choice. Several days later, I was still at my dad's house. Each day had been a nightmare, as my dad somehow got progressively more scary and mad. I just didn't know where else to go. I felt totally trapped. Then one day, my dad was watching TV and getting drunk when he suddenly yelled at me and my sister to come downstairs. When we got there, he handed me a machete and told us that we had to go out and butcher the remains, then bury them again. He didn't want to risk anyone finding the body and recognizing it. We were terrified, but we did as we were told once again and headed to the backyard with the machete. A few hours later, we came back inside the house, both covered in blood. My dad told us to never say a word to anyone, and then he told my sister to run upstairs and shower. She immediately did so, obviously happy to be able to clean the disgusting filth off of herself. When the shower turned on, my dad suddenly stood up and walked over to me. He had a strange look in his eye as he got closer and closer. Then he slowly leaned in and kissed me. I resisted at first, but then I gave in. I realized then why he wanted my boyfriend out of the way. It all made sense. A few months after that, we got married. I don't know how it ever got to that point, but it just seemed right. It took something completely horrible to get us there, but it was all worth it. Unfortunately, it couldn't last. A few weeks after our wedding, the police came knocking at our door. Apparently, we were all under arrest for suspicion of murder. My boyfriend hadn't been seen in a long time, and we were the last people to be with him. The trial lasted a while, but my family and I were all eventually convicted and sent to prison. I've been here for almost a year now, and I won't be getting out anytime soon, all because of our deadly love triangle. In 2019, a love triangle involving a woman named Amanda McClure, her then-boyfriend named John McGuire, and her birth father Larry McClure led to a horrific Valentine's Day night. Amanda was adopted as a child and had recently reunited with the birth father and her sister Anna. The father and sister picked Amanda and her boyfriend up from their Indiana residence. The group traveled back to Larry's home in West Virginia. While the visit initially went well, after a week, the father and two daughters began to plot the boyfriend's demise. On the day of Valentine's, the boyfriend was struck with a wine bottle, sedated, and tortured for two days before burying him in the backyard. They dug up his remains and dismembered them. Approximately three weeks after the ordeal, Amanda and her father got married. The body was later discovered, and all three suspects were immediately taken into custody and charged accordingly. On Valentine's Day of 2019, I experienced the most terrifying moment of my life. Things had been leading up to that night for a while. At the time, I lived in a small house by myself. I used to take walks around the neighborhood almost every day to stay active and clear my head. But after a while, I had to stop. I started noticing this creepy older man every time I left the house for a walk. At first, I just noticed him staring at me from across the street. But day by day, things got more serious. If I didn't see him on foot, I would notice the same car slowly passing by me on my walk over and over again. It didn't take long to realize that it was the same creep in the driver's seat. I hoped that switching up my routine would get him off my back, but he apparently didn't have anything better to do than stalk me. Just when I thought I was safe and could enjoy some time alone, he would appear out of nowhere and start making advances. Hi there, beautiful. Could I ask you a question? Who are you? Where did you come from? Would you like to be my woman? Ugh, no! You're disgusting! I could take care of you. You wouldn't have to lift a finger. Let me use my fingers. You're sick and you're a freak. Stop following me! Let me love you! Leave me alone or I'm calling the cops! He would lunge at me and try to grab me but I ran away every time he got too close. It happened several times. The only advantage I had was that he was much older and I was easily able to outrun him. Of course, I knew I was still in danger. 
He never made himself visible around my house, but if he could find me in any random spot in the neighborhood at any time of day, then there was a very good chance he knew where I lived and that I lived alone. I didn't have space for a roommate and I didn't love going for walks more than I valued my life. So after a while, I knew I had to stay inside the house and keep it locked up. When I needed to leave, I would only use my car and I would keep a bottle of mace clutched in my hand. However, it was around that time that I started to feel truly afraid and trapped. I filed a restraining order against him. It was a double-edged sword. On the one hand, I finally knew his name. I had a written injunction against him in case he tried anything, and he wasn't allowed within 500 feet of my house. On the other hand, if there was any doubt that he knew my address before, the restraining order got rid of it. I never thought I would have a stalker, but I suddenly realized how knowing that there's some psycho creep out there obsessed with you severely changes almost every aspect of life. I became paranoid of every sound every shadow, every flicker of light. I rarely left the house unless I knew I would be around people, and I tried to have company as often as possible, even if we didn't do anything. The worst part was, I still kept seeing him from the car, and he always stared me down as I passed him. After months of being stalked by him, the early morning of Valentine's Day finally came. In the middle of the night, I woke up to a noise in the house. After a few minutes, I assumed it was just a random creak in the house and I was being paranoid, so I laid down and tried to go back to sleep. I was half awake several moments later when my eyes opened on their own. In the darkness, I saw a blurry figure at the foot of my bed. Fear washed over me as my vision suddenly became clear. It was him! He found his way into my room and was standing just a few feet away from me. Happy Valentine's Day! <coughs> Before I knew it, the psycho jumped on top of me. He tried to take what he wanted, but I fought back with everything I had. I screamed for help even though I knew it was pointless. Eventually, I kicked him hard enough to get him off me. While he was vulnerable for a moment, I kicked him in the face again until he fell off the bed. I got ready to fight more, but when he got up, he just ran away. I was thankful that he didn't have a weapon, but I didn't wait for him to come back with one before grabbing my phone and calling the cops. By the time they arrived, my stalker was long gone but I gave them the description of what happened and how he looked. After a long, stressful Valentine's Day, I finally got a call in the evening from the police station telling me my stalker had been arrested. They slapped a few charges on him and sent him to jail, but I knew that meant he would be roaming the streets again by the end of the year. I took advantage of the valuable time without his presence and got my life back on track. I moved across the city so he wouldn't be able to find me when he got out. Part of me wanted to move clear across the country, but in the end, I knew I would hate it if I allowed him to take my friends and family away from me. These days, I continue to keep my eye out for trouble like him, and I take kickboxing classes in case I ever need to make another creep taste the heel of my boot. The story was inspired by a disturbing Valentine's Day incident that happened in 2019. Cape Coral police say a man was arrested after being accused of breaking into the home of a woman who has a restraining order against him so he could wish her a happy Valentine's Day. According to police, a 38-year-old man named James Carobs Boeing broke into the woman's home and was standing at the end of her bed when she woke up. She told James to leave her room and immediately called the police to report the man. The victim has an active restraining order against him which says he can't be within 500 feet of her residence. Before police could arrive to the scene, James left the house in his car and was seen driving off Chiquita Boulevard into a dead end where an officer pulled him over. Ignoring verbal commands from the officer, James drove off and his Honda was located a short time later, abandoned after he fled on foot. An officer later noticed a man matching James' description walking down the street. When approached, he gave a false name to the officer but was eventually identified. He was then slapped with an abundance of charges and sent to jail. 